This is the CR10 version 2, a machine I reviewed at the end of 2019, and when, when I was reviewing it, it said it came with a Titan extruder in the marketing material, but there was no such thing in the box. And at the time I thought that was just a marketing department stuff up, but a week ago a Titan extruder showed up at my doorstep, unannounced, and it said it was from E3D. And this is really interesting because this is a genuine E3D extruder sent to upgrade a Creality machine. So should you spend the $65 US Creality is charging to upgrade your CR10 version 2 to a genuine Titan extruder? Um, hmm, maybe not. <laughs> How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Thank you for being so patient with me. I'm back, I'm doing things. It's gonna be an awesome year. Now everything's out of the way. But I spent the last week almost playing with this upgrade and it hasn't gone as well as I would have hoped. So let's get this out of the way. Firstly, is this a genuine E3D Titan extruder? Yes, it is. Uh, E3D has confirmed it online and it has the genuine holographic sticker to match. It's a real E3D Titan and it's actually fitted to a uh, V6 clone as part of the Creality machine. Now you'll notice that this looks very uh, homebrew and that's because the fitment of the Titan to the original hot end design and plastic parts of the CR10 version 2 went very badly <laughs> and look I'll just I'll just put it out right now some of it might have been something I did I don't know but I'll walk you through what happened and you make the call at the end what you think but to start with the actual upgrade process now there's a small instruction manual that comes with you a little booklet to help you upgrade the Bowden style to the direct drive Titan and to me it feels like the design was done with engineers at Creality who didn't even have a real Titan on hand. They used a like spec sheet dimensions because certain bolts don't line up and they can't be tightened unless you use really janky angles. So you twist the whole thing out of the way to put bolts in, to put it back in place. It really wasn't easy to do. And as an upgrade, you think it's a bolt on upgrade. No, 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 it took quite a while to get it in place. And then you have the wiring extension loom. So because this is all the way here versus all the way on the frame, you need to extend that, uh, that stepper motor wire. And it's a single loom with four wires and it's wired backwards. So they are aware of this. E3D said they're aware of this, uh, but that made, made the Titan go backwards. So when it's meant to be extruding, it was retracting and vice versa. Quality control, please. Um, how do you mess that up? So as someone who knows how to fix that, it's very easy. Four wires, there's two on each coil of the stepper. You flip one of them, so one of the coils, and it will rotate the correct direction. But if you don't know that, then you're gonna think you've got a, a dud unit. You won't know what's going on. You, most people wouldn't assume the cable is the cause. Uh, and then you've spent 65 bucks on uh, making your printer unfunctional. Next to the stepper are uh, E-steps. So because it's a Titan geared extruder, you need to change your E-steps to be much higher. And some of you clever guys on Twitter did mention M92, which is a G-code command to change your E-steps. But I uh, didn't have a computer on hand to tether with Repetier and you had to turn it like a thousand times. So I used a cordless drill. Don't at me, it worked. <laughs> So we got it all together and working, right? Well, I did a few test prints. I did a uh, Benchy and an Octopus. Um, I forgot that in the Creality Cura, it has like the supports and raft on automatically. So I do have supports on my Benchy and a raft on my Octopus. Oh well. And then I swapped to a red PLA and that's when I noticed the catastrophe. The hot end was leaking. <laughs> okay, so this is where I don't know if it was my fault. So some of you might remember I did a one millimeter nozzle video on the CR10 version two, and I printed a hairy line, which had a very bad hair day, but I did swap back to the 0.4 nozzle for all of these tests. And I did ensure it was tight, but it was tight up to the heat break, not to the block. So this is important because you don't want the heat break threads to be loose in the block. You want them to be tightened onto the nozzle so that, uh, so it's nice and tight and doesn't leak but it did leak. Looking closer at these photos though, doing a bit of forensics work, I think I know what might have happened. Remember that twisting to get the Titan into place? By doing that, because looking at the heater block, there's no room for it to rotate in that plastic shroud. 
I think it might have unscrewed it slightly, uh, which would have definitely allowed the plastic to ooze out the top. Just looking at it, I can't really think of anything else that could have been. And if it was that, that's a massive design flaw and not really the fault of the user if they must twist the Titan to put it in place. So I only noticed when it was way too late and it completely gummed it up. And this is where I discovered that the hot end design Crowley has used is almost unserviceable. You see, they've used a high temperature cement to keep the thermistor in place and uh, to get the actual hot end out. You can't even twist or get tools into it because that big plastic monstrosity is in the way. You need to undo everything. And in the end, to even just maneuver it, I discovered it was just irreparable, unredeemable. And I had to swap to another V6. So this is another V6 clone that I had on hand. But I thought with it all apart, why does this plastic thing exist? What is its purpose? It's a cooling duct, but not a very good one. Uh, it's over-engineered. It's almost like someone justifying their, the reason they should be employed by a company, uh, justifying their position. It's way over the top and it's very over-engineered. It doesn't need to be there. So I thought, well, why not just whack on the Titan using the two mounting points because it's an angled steel bracket. It's very rigid and just do that. So that's what I did. And I discovered that while it did extrude okay, this is a uh, all metal design, by the way, it has PTFE going to an all metal uh, heat break. I was getting appalling results uh, in terms of cooling. So this is another frustration when you're upgrading things. There's so many designs online for ducts and stuff that just kind of suck. And the one I used just couldn't push enough air. So I tried another one, which is this latest one here with the original squirrel fan. And I'm getting quite nice results. This is the snowflake lattice torture test that I designed. And the underside is really good. There's a little bit of string. It might be a retraction dialing and I need to do maybe a temperature thing. It's also been very humid because we've just had like flooding after the bushfires. Welcome to Australia. But I've spent enough time on this. I can't really do much more right now. I wanted to get this out to you guys to really express my confusion at this sort of product. And at this point, some of you might be wondering just why does Angus bash Creality? all the time. What's wrong with him? Well, let me throw a spanner in the works. I've been using my Ender 3 for an entire project. And what I did is I used a upgraded direct drive modification link on eBay. Sorry, I know it was sent to me a long time ago, but the print quality is phenomenal in PLA using that mod, no stringing at all anymore. All of that's fixed. And that machine is so different to this. And I don't know why, <laughs> and I'm just very confused. It seems like as a company, Creality is very scattered. They've got these injection molded things mixed in with these utilitarian sheet metal and extrusion driven designs. And some of them work good, some of them don't work good. Quality control varies. Uh, you have the, uh, the phantom versions where they change stuff without telling people. I just, I really don't understand. <laughs> And I've spent enough of my time on this to, uh, yeah, I've got other things to do, quite frankly. And one of those other things is the Tronxy D01. Some of you may remember that machine, which kind of almost caught fire. Well, I've actually fitted an E3D Hemera to it and I'm getting really good results. So again, this is my opinion and I'm always very frank with you guys, very open and honest. And I'd love to hear your comments down below because I do believe that a collaboration between a Chinese company and a UK company is fantastic. E3D, Crelly, I'd love to see more stuff in the future. This just wasn't it for me. And again, that's my opinion. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.